Okay, everybody, I am back. I kind of started this without you, and it was only because I wasn't sure what I was going to do. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this project with you, just in case there's anyone wondering how you can do these with the dried flowers, okay? So what I have here is I have this container of these little dried pink flowers. Um, these must have come from... Uh, Tumu or Amazon, okay? I can post links if anybody's interested, but you can find these at either of those places. And I put just enough clear resin of J. Diction resin into just the stomach part of this frog and a little bit into these legs. Okay, so what I did is I dipped the flower into some resin before I put them in there. And that was just to help Make sure that I didn't get too many bubbles coming up from those flowers. Okay, so now that's cured. And so I'm going to go ahead and continue to pour this and add another layer underneath it. This layer is going to be pretty close to the top. When I, when I demold this frog, that layer of flowers, as soon as I turn it over, we're going to see it um right at its back okay and i think i've got one flower kind of up here near the head so that's what i'm going to do with that i'm going to spray a little bit of alcohol in there help with those bubbles and pour some in here pour some more in there so i'm going to go ahead and give some more resin And then this time what I'm going to do is I've got some dried flowers that just came. These were, I don't know, these might have been like some kind of a lily. I think these were purple lilies that I dried. And I'm going to just take some of these and maybe crum crumple them up a little bit to do this next layer. Oh, they don't crumple. Hmm. Well, I will go ahead and cut these up a little bit and just put some in here. For my next layer. Oops, it might have a little bit more of a woodsy look to it. I thought about doing green moss because I thought that would be a really pretty contrast with the um, with the pinkish purple flowers. But then I realized that I've I've done that. I've used that green moss in this frog mold before on a video. So I thought, let's try something a little bit different. See if we can find, if this will kind of give it a different, kind of a different look. So some of these are flowers are the same color on both sides, and some of them are kind of a tan color on the other side. There's a bubble stuck to that one now there. Just gonna place some of those. You know, you just really don't have to be very, um, you don't have to have expensive dried flowers. You can find something in your yard, wild flowers even. I just, on these, I didn't even put these in silica gel. I just set them out on a paper plate and let them dry. And they may have held their color a bit better had I used the silica gel, but um, I'm just fine with, with the way that they turned out. But it's all preference, you know. Do what works for you and what you like. Poke some of them down. They'll be at different depths. Some are floating. Some will be poked down in there. And I noticed with this particular kind of dried flower that they don't if I poke it in there, it stays where I left it. So, all right, so now I'm going to go ahead and just put a bit more resin in here. Get up to the toes. This is probably my favorite frog mold, this style. I love the little rounded feet. There's another one um, that was really popular before this one came out that had kind of 
you know, the more it wasn't really a cutesy frog. It was kind of more of a realistic kind of a pointy frog. And I like that one too, but this one is definitely my favorite to do. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to move those flowers around a bit because they're kind of bunched up once I filled this in. I could have waited until I got this full, but I wasn't really sure what I was going to do yet. You might have to keep going back in and filling up, going at the feet, because sometimes it evens out, you know, in the middle, and you can't really tell um, when that is until your feet are pretty much all level. And I take my stick, scrape off the mold so that I have nice, even little toes and not web feet. <laughs> and let's go ahead and stick some of these back in there. I'm just going to break off one another one of these <clears throat> little petals. And maybe just put a couple here in the feet, little pieces of it. Not too much. Just enough to kind of tie it all together. Just to add a little color, I'm going to take some of these green. They're like... I don't know sure if it's glass. It might be crushed glass that are just kind of painted a metallic green. These came from, I think, Joanne Fabrics for 99 cents at Christmas time. So I'm going to just pour out a few of these and see if I can put these just in the feet, in the toes, just to kind of give it a little bit of pop of color. And they're heavy enough, I think, to where they're going to just stay there. Okay, that's all we're going to do. I'm going to give it a quick spray and we're going to wait for this to cure. And then we'll be back to unmold it. Okay, when that is all done, I will be back. I'll see you then. Hello, everybody. I'm back and this little frog is all the way cured. And, you know, I've got a little bubble right here, kind of like a little belly button bubble, right? Right in the center. It's on the surface. Somehow I missed that. Um, I didn't come back and check it as often as I probably should have. But that's okay. I'm, I am thinking that I'm going to need some kind of a top coat over this. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to just keep it translucent, but let's get him out of here and see. What we think, let's see, he's going to, I'm going to have to break the seal around these back parts and then we'll work on getting that seal broken around his head. It's pretty, I don't see any bubbles on the inside. Just that one so far. There we go. Once you get that part done, you can kind of see the air start to come in around the mold. And I prefer to get him out of there with nothing, maybe just some water, but it's even better if you can just use nothing at all, in my opinion. So gosh, turned out nice and kind of glassy clear, this part. This was all done with J Diction. This was regular pour. And let's turn it over and see how it looks. And wow, it's actually quite pretty. The vibrant part of the pink in these flowers, um, they kind of stayed true to color. Honestly, they weren't all that bright and vibrant anyway. They were kind of more of a more of a fall flower probably than a spring colored flower. But as you can see, as I dipped these flowers here and there's a lot of little spots and places in those flowers, 
multiple layers of petals, dunking them into the resin first, and literally it's just a dip in to cover the whole flower. And I kind of turn them sideways just to see if I see any bubbles coming out. And if I don't, then I go ahead and submerge it. And you can see that I had no bubbles rise up at all from this. And yeah, really not a bubble to be seen. And there was no pressure pot or anything like that used. Just my resin was nice and warm and fairly bubble free when I started. So yeah, that is actually quite pretty. And bringing in those little um painted glass or or metallic rocks whatever those were into the toes just kind of gave it that little pop of color that i really feel like this needed and yeah what do you guys think what do you think it's actually quite pretty clear if i did some kind of a background color gosh you know i just don't know that i want to do that this would almost just take on whatever color you're setting it on, right? Because of the translucent, but it's really pretty, really does look like a glass frog. Now, I'm kind of disappointed since I was just kind of playing around with this in the beginning, that would have been the time for me to go ahead and insert the eyes. And I didn't do that, so he's got no eyes. And I could go in and just take a pin and color in some eyes, which I might do. But um but for right now, let me go and grab my little colored backgrounds and we can see if we want to add anything. Here are just a couple of my colors that we can see. This is what he would look like if we went and did a white top coat. What do you think about that? I mean, it doesn't really make too much difference. Let's try it with, I've got a gray. I don't have a black circle right now, but here it is with the gray. Actually, that gray is kind of pretty. And let's see, here's a blue. Try that really quick. It kind of gives it more of a water effect. And the last one I've got right here is this kind of a peach color. That kind of brings out the center of the flowers. Hmm. So what I'll probably do if I do decide to do a top coat on the on the base here to bring in a color is I'll probably go ahead and use my one of my pens. So you know I really kind of enjoyed having that little bit of a peach color that brought out the center of those flowers. Um, but then I decided to take most of that off. I left a little bit here in the tips of the feet. And then I decided that I actually want to go ahead and bring out some green because I think that might actually help the flowers just kind of stand out a bit more. So I chose this um, this dual marker in number 54, Riordan, I think. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and just color the back of this green after all. I'm going to turn this over and we'll see if this isn't dry all the way yet. So I'm going to have to be kind of careful, but let's see. Oh, that definitely did bring out the color of the flowers more. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. Do you see that it um, definitely brings out the color in a different kind of a way? Now my frog, I could come in here and color underneath his chin and kind of right here at the corners of his legs to make it a little bit more even. Let me see about doing that. But, um, but I think I am going to go ahead and color under his chin up to his bottom lip. And this may be more than what you would want to deal with. But I did kind of make that all come together a bit better. Let's go ahead and just do this part of his leg as well. Here, this looks like this on the bottom. Okay, 
And this is what he looks like all done. So with his legs and everything kind of all uniform now, I like this much better. Really pretty, really gives it that pop of color with the green underneath. Okay, I just went ahead and used my little black Sharpie pen here and just went ahead and did some little black eyes. And I'll probably come in and do like a little gold slit across um, each one just to kind of make it look more frog light. But right now I'm gonna wait for that Sharpie to dry all the way. But gosh, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. What do you guys think? What do you think of the change in the color to the green? You could definitely leave it translucent. So many different things you can do with this mold. It's one of my very favorites. Let me know what y'all think. Thank you so much for joining me. And he's going to join my other amphibian collection <laughs> that I have got going because I just can't get enough of these little guys. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this project. I hope it inspired you and gave you some ideas of your own. And I will. See you all next time.